Welcome and thank you for joining me today on To Plan the Paint. We're going to paint some nice vibrant tomatoes, uh, fresh growing in the garden, nearly ready to pick. So there's some vibrant greens, some vibrant reds. And with that, we've got 90 minutes, so it's going to be a bit painterly today. But uh, let's get right into it. <clears throat> I just want to start by fixing a bit of red for the... Uh, tomatoes themselves. I'm adding a little bit of chev red and some chev yellow because tomatoes tend to lean, you know, they go from a green to an orange into a red. So they've got a lot of uh, color present in there. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, yellow green. Got too much yellow green so we'll have to add some more chev red and bring this back more to a red. So you can see what I'm doing here. Get a nice tomatoey red. Just makes a good shadow red value. I'm gonna try to bring it up in value. Compare that to my reference down here. Actually pretty good there. We'll get some of that uh, pink brought up so that we'll use for our highlights there. <clears throat> and this picture was taken outdoors, so a little bit of an overcast, so there's not a real bright highlight from the sun, but the shadows are also very subtle from all the ambient light. So we're going to have to gauge where they are and just kind of lay in some shadows of our own, I think, to really represent the object's form. Alright. So we got ourselves a nice. Set of values for doing the tomato. Um, now we got to do the still green yellow areas. And the tomato in the back, as well as the uh, portion of that front tomato that hasn't changed yet. So let's grab some green, grab some yellow in here, and just a touch of red. So you can see this one coming out. I want this to take a little bit of a tone of orange into it. I'm actually going to use a small bit of English red here, I think. English red is very strong tinting strength, so you need a very small amount. And we're turning more of a tan. Too much. Fortunately, I can thin that back out with some yellow and green. I'm actually not real far off from that back in between color between the green that's just starting to turn orange. <clears throat> I'm trying to clean the knife off a little bit so we don't contaminate our source colors up here. Let's pull that back in the groove. We don't want it drying out too quick while we're getting ready to work with it here. 
Good shadow value. Now let's bring it up more. Needs a bit more yellow in there yet. some highlight color for this as well by bringing down some white and lightening this value and kind of washing that a little bit. Take a number six filbert and start laying in the tomatoes. I'm going to start with the shadows and the red tomato on the far right. So, what do we got here? I'll leave it off this way a little bit. trying to lay these in. We'll be painting over top of these reference lines here in a little bit. do any gardening of your own. This was actually taken in our garden a little bit earlier this year. It's always nice being able to get that fresh produce right off the vine. See, even as we just kind of blend it with the background that more of that canvas show through, we're getting a appearance of form here. Let's see here, so we got a nice shadow here. Get my 
fill that in a bit more. Nice shadow. Back in here, it follows itself around. Because this other one's blocking it some, so it cast shadow. And then just a little bit as it turns away. Alright, now on this other tomato and shadow, it's got a bigger shadow because it has some shape here. The shadow kind of comes down and up higher here to show us some of the shape of the tomato. And we're going to clean up these edges with the uh, greenery that appears in the background to sharpen up the objects, really make them stand out. This one's actually got a little bit of a shadow value up in here where the stem comes out, but not a lot. I hope my voice is being picked up well enough with the setup today. I'm going to step up to our next lighter value and bring these in. <clears throat> In case you missed it, the reference image that I'm painting to is available. The link's in the description. It goes to a website that I run. I primarily started out as a blog, but I used it to host some of my artworks <clears throat> as a contact point. here I think let me add the other value in here the other hues I think it'll make the red stand out a little more vibrantly All right. so I did make a little bit of a faux pas here I need to down a little bit of black and 
I'm going to tone a little bit darker down here for this uh, harsh bottom here. We're just going to lay it right on top. And we'll blend that in then. But you'll see there's a cast shadow that separates the two. Bring that value up a little bit by blending on the canvas here. And I'm painting today on an 8x10 hardboard panel. It's uh, been gessoed. It's a surface I like to use because one, they, they'll pop right into a nice little picture frame. And two, I can prepare them myself from just buying a sheet of hardboard and cutting it down. Putting the gesso on myself and getting the surface that is consistent. You get a manufactured one, it's consistent while they manufacture it the same way and then they might change their process and suddenly your board's smoother than it used to be or rougher than it used to be. You don't have that control that uh, I feel is more necessary if you want to know exactly what your surface is going to be like to paint on. You can actually cut this down with a utility knife, one of my preferred methods, using a right angle square and lining it up and just scoring it a few times. Maybe I'll put together a video on preparing a hardboard surface. What I'm doing now is blending out this shadow value. I'm darkening where I had laid in the shadow a bit more. I'm blending it on the canvas to, uh, yeah, I have to clean that off now. Went too dark so pick up some of the original shadow value and we're gonna blend it right back in here. I'm very light on the edges as we blend the edges together. And hardboard's a little bit uh, smoother, so your blending's a little bit more work because it wants to push the paint and slide the paint around rather than mix. But you get used to it after a bit. You just gotta be softer and your touch. It's harder to learn on, so if you're just learning, I would stick to canvas panels or canvas. again. One of my issues I get to is I get so into the painting I'm working on that I kind of get away from the reference too much. I forget to actually go back and check the reference. Especially as I'm standing here talking I just get lost in thought and uh, There's a band right along the, almost in the middle, it's probably the bottom third. It has a bit more of an orange intense streak. So I'm gonna take a bit more of this uh, Chev Yellow and bring it down into this red value. I wanna make more of a bright, vibrant orange here. So that you can see what I'm doing here, but uh, get that up in front of the camera. And I'm gonna switch brushes to use To another number six brush for the lights here. <clears throat> Set my current one down. We're gonna pick up some of this. And it kind of follows right along in here. I don't know if this is gonna come across on the camera, but it's definitely visible here on this. Hardboard. I just want to blend that in. I'm going to do the same thing on the other tomato. I'm 
it's got a little bit up here on this tomato too. This also tells you a little bit more about the shape of the tomato. small kind of crisscross strokes here very lightly to help blend in the edges a little bit more really lose where the values change from one to the next just to come makes a nice gradual transition above that we have a little bit to this before we get into the brighter pink highlights and there's a bit of a scar on this one especially it cuts in right here and then back up we got a little bit of in here and there's a scar on the back side too so we're gonna leave some empty space to fill in the scar off the top here. Doesn't look like it's enough step up so I'm going to uh, add a bit more white. <clears throat> Not too much, just a small amount. <clears throat> Part of the reason why it's not enough is I didn't clean the brush off thoroughly before switching into this lighter value, and so it's blending with what I had on the brush, which was a little bit darker. So I'm going to pick up something that's a little bit lighter so that when it blends, it approaches the values that I'm looking for. We blend it quite so much. It is a tomato surface. They're a little bit shiny. <clears throat> we'll do the same thing in the regions that need it on this tomato here. A little bit of a transition here right as it goes to, to its yet to be changed. this scar right out of it. Just this one has some regions that haven't quite changed over. I'm actually going to buy grab the
clean this brush off pretty good here. We're going to move into that region that hasn't changed into the red ripeness yet, so it's got a lot of the green and yellow still present in it here. We're going to represent that here on the surface. Okay, pull some of this red right up into it. Get that nice transition there. just joining me for the first time I've been streaming for a couple of weeks now and so you can go back there's a variety of other videos there some florals some uh, wet and wet techniques for some landscapes a little farm scene we're gonna be changing up Wednesdays a little bit here I'm gonna start working on multi-part so we can do a little bit more detailed pieces because at the end of the day painting is time and work to really get a refined result. What I'm doing here in these 90 minute sessions is painterly and lacks some of the detail and depth that you can really get into and bring a painting from that. Well that's a nice painting to a wow factor. So we'll be uh, breaking a painting about this size down into like I want to say about four sessions. Put a little bit of this in here we can see. out of here is not changed yet. Alright, now I'm going to switch back to my shadow brush. I tend to keep a brush uh, separated by hue, by values, so I use one for uh, lights and one for shadows. Um, sometimes if I have a particular color like a yellow or a white that I don't, that gets uh, corrupted easily, I uh, will designate a brush just for those, but I think today we're going to be good with just a shadow and just a light brush. So we're going to pick up some of this green shadow value and we're going to start laying in this tomato that's hanging out in the back. kind of tipped over on its side so it's got a bit of a overly appearance to it stem of the lower tomato kind of was going to come out in front. You can see I still got a lot of red shadow in this uh, brush. So we'll pick up some more of our green. That's what we want represented out here. I'm going to do the same thing I did above where I'm going to add a little bit of black into here and darken this on the canvas itself. And there's some darker green, very vibrant green gonna come up from the stem of this other tomato as well. So I'm gonna watch. I think it may have already overlaid it too much. So we'll see. Looks like it's probably right along here. There's two of them. So they're gonna be close, but they're gonna be off a little bit, I believe.
I'm going to switch. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't bring down the black and do the a little bit darker. Right along the edge. As you can see, it's much darker right along in here where the light's obscured from this other tomato in front. So we'll bring this. transition here but <clears throat> I'm going to take uh, another 10 brush back into that pick up a little bit of the lighter value I'm gonna push this back in here if I don't have a nice blend here by using the bigger brush it spreads your pressure out across the larger area so the blending is a little bit easier and so it's a little bit easier to Gotta filter out these transitions. I know, especially on the camera, it was really obvious where the edges were. We're trying to kind of soften all these edges here, kind of marry everything together into a single object so it doesn't look like it's painted on the surface, but it's actually emanating from the object itself, these changes. Should be checking the reference more closely so that I keep these shape of the edges where they need to be but in the interest of time I'm just going to kind of blend it all out here As I say, not as I do, moment. Bend this one out a little bit more. I think that's looking pretty good there. <clears throat> Alright, back to the green. Just cleaning out my light brush here so I can pick up some more of this lighter value that's on the sides and top of this tomato. I got a stem cutting through here. Gotta watch that. As I'm painting these, I sit here and think, what do I need to make sure comes across in this painting? What separates this tomato appearance from that of an apple? A large part of what it actually does, the shapes are similar. So these leaves that stick out 
are a very different shape on a tomato. So you want to make sure that you keep that shape visible and apparent in your paintings. So when people look at it, they think, hmm, tomato, not apple. And hopefully the greenery in the background will also make it a little more clear with the stems connecting them that they are tomatoes and not apples. Take a look here and see how <clears throat> I'm doing it. <clears throat> how I'm doing on time. Excuse my uh, throat clearing. I get the talking and then stop, and then the plum kinds of builds up a little bit there. And I don't have a convenient mute option right now. I'm clean the brush off pretty good here. I'm lay in some of this highlights. Actually shows up quite a bit back in here. A bit underneath this. <clears throat> so I've been painting over, over a year now, still learning some techniques, still improving, hope to always be improving. And all these direct paintings in a short period of time, they all add into the skill set I'm developing here. <clears throat> this one's really kind of missing the mark with the green. Probably need to bring in a little bit of permanent green here. So I did add a little touch of permanent green down here. Permanent green deep. Because there's just bits of green in here that aren't showing through. And that's a more 
powerful green as far as this palette goes. I'm just going to blend it right in. It gives a variation of the skin. As you can see, it's not all changing at the same same pace in the image here, so I'm going to bring in some more of that green. <clears throat> Alright, and then we're going to mix some stem colors up, play in some stems, and then we'll do just kind of a variegated greenery background in the interest of time. To make our stem color, we're gonna start with this permanent green deep. We'll bring that down. We're gonna add in some of this yellow green. I'm gonna add a touch of English red in here too. So there's lots of yellows and reds in the stems and just adding a touch of that it's going to bring it down I'm going to take a little bit of the green away and make it a little bit more of a closer to a brown but still very green let's see mm. that stem has a really kind of a blue green appearance with some green highlights so to lighten this up definitely going to scoot this together this is going to be more of our shadow variety. I'm going to add in some, I'm going to bring down a little bit more of this permanent green. And we're going to mix in a bunch more of the yellow. We want something a little lighter than the, add in some, so we got some more vibrant. You can see the values difference there. Probably not enough of a step, so I'm going to add in a little bit more just direct shove yellow. And this should elevate it a bit more. And there's also this really works right clear to the center of the stems and at the joints. There's also a very pale kind of a cast to some of the stuff. It's got little hairs that are caught water. So we're going to elevate some of this with some Naples yellow in here. So we're going to pale it out a little bit. Bring it up in value quite a bit. Make it a good bit more pale. And then I'm going to do the same thing with some white off of this dark stem green. So it has a little less yellow in it, but it has more of that uh, really for the direct stem part itself. It's just kind of a, a really pale green. So you can see we got. And that goes for the tops of the stem where it's got all those little hairs catching light and white, really brightening and softening the, the image. Alright, so let's clean the knife off. Let's get some stems. 
just going to use a number two. Um, Filbert. Just because I need a little bit of control in here. Looks like I'm going to have to come back in here and add in some red where I missed a spot. And that's okay too. And that comes out, touches here, and this one that comes up and down. up some more paint here. This kind of comes right up here. That 
actually drops down, it connects them right up here. So we'll fill this in a little more. It's actually going to have some higher highlights on that top. And we got a bit of a leaf going up here. joins with this one so you can't really make it out they overlap each other just that in there and I need to go in and kind of clean up this comes off of a main stem here So we're going to pick up some of the bright green, and it starts in here. Let me get some of that in here, so we're going to have to go a little bit lighter yet. And this adds, yeah, we're going to go right up into this. to it here. Where it's more in the light. And the same thing on this down in here. Got this joint right here, elbow. And it comes up to a joint up here. Top of it, it's also very pale and white. As you can see, I got the size off a little bit on this stem sizes here. I'm not going to fret too much about it, you know. What I'm going to do pretty soon here, we're going to start closing up these spots that are left on the... on the 
the tomatoes themselves. Add some yellow green in there. And we'll add some depth to these. Filling in some highlights on here. Get a feel for it turning away from the, the light there. Bit on the stem over here. Catching a little light here. I got to catch a little bit of light out here. This one's going to be catching some light here. And hopefully my voice is coming across okay. If not, I may have to go back and edit this and do a voiceover. Kind of blending in, bringing the stem in. <clears throat> Trying to make those joints kind of stand out a little bit more the direction changes of the stem. It's not too bad up here. Shadow down just a little bit. <clears throat> and lost my reference down here. We'll just finish this one out by memory. All right, so I need to go back to my number six here. I gotta add some, fill this in a little bit in here. We don't really want any white 
holes, leaves holes in your picture. You can really break the immersion when someone's looking at your your work if you've left any white of your subsurface showing. stem green in here. Some more highlights in here. As soon as I picked up some of that stem green, or let's clean off the brush a little bit. Move this in there nice and thick along the along that leaf, and then we'll blend it out here. All right. For a background, I'm just going to take some dark green, blend it out to a very light green, just kind of a gradient in the back with some broken up regions. Indicate some shadows and some crossing. Clean number two brush. I'm gonna pick up some of this red. Space was just a little too tight to try to clean it up with that number ten.
think you're going to pick up a little bit of burnt umber. I'm going to line this up, scab over here. And then I'll drop some white into there. There's definitely a brown region over here. Just a little bit. We'll also catch this one up here. And this is just using a little number, number one round or a little liner brush. So I'm gonna wait now, clean off that burn umber off really good. Just gonna pull some titanium white right down here. So you can see the palette. And the right side of the image is a bit darker than the left side, so we're just going to uh, kind of grade across from a darker to a lighter value and then we'll add in some leafy indications in a few spots. This really probably in here. Don't want a bright, bright light. It'll look a little bit out of place. So I'm going to use a three-quarter inch brush. I'm going to just bring some green down, some ultramarine blue down, some aqueous yellow down. Bit of a blue color here, so I'm going to add a little more maple yellow. And don't really want it to be very bright, I want it to be washed out background. And this background may detract a little bit from it. I didn't really plan it out, so I'm just kind of Throwing some stuff in here together. Blue-green, kind of making a green here. I'll add some white to it to bring some light to it. And Into it over here, and really get our darker value. And I'm going to use this to kind of direct the attention too by having the bit darker outside, away from the away from the tomatoes, and lighten up as it gets closer to the tomatoes. We're just going to lay this in quick because we're getting getting close to our time limit here. 
ideally you would uh, just stop painting at a good spot and pick it up on the next session. And that's what we'll be doing on Wednesdays. We'll be taking a smaller amount of the painting to focus on and spending a larger amount of time on a smaller area of the painting so that we can really elevate the results. All right, so I'm going to paint around those with this very light even lighter than that because it's uh, getting pretty close to the rather close to the value that we have for our stem. I don't want it to be the same value. It'll blend. It won't stand out. In fact, I'm going to go the opposite as what I had originally stated. I'm going to start dark in the center and, and work my way out to lighter. So there's more contrast between the tomatoes. I'm taking the green brush I had used earlier, pick up some of this value, darker value, background. I'm using the number six brush initially so that I can keep my edges sharp. these little decisions as you go. What should the background be? What should the foreground be? Unless you're doing the whole reference and then you've already got it laid out in front of you. But if you change it up any, you have to think about what the impact of some of these decisions is going to be on your final result. You can already kind of see what it looked like with a light value border you know as the background and decided I think the dark will make this stand out better. Try not to stand in front too much. So you can still see the images I'm painting. Trying to keep these edges nice and crisp along here. Really defines the edge of that tomato, makes the tomato stand out better. It's fuzzy, it's going to look a little bit out of focus and off in the distance. And these tomatoes are right in front of the viewer. As I'm doing this, I'm slightly changing the shape. I probably am not matching the reference exactly. At the end of the day, it still needs to be a tomato-y shape. I can have slight indents. They're not perfect circles or spheres. So if you paint, do you paint standing up or sitting down? I find I tend to enjoy, have more freedom of movement if I'm standing and tend to enjoy standing more. How do you paint? If you're painting for really long sessions, standing can be a little more tiring. But I can be as close I can easily take a step back, get a better f look at what I'm doing without 
the effort of standing up and sitting back down and being able to uh, turn my arm a little more. I find it easier when I'm standing. Let me know in the comments what your preferred uh, position is when you're painting. Try to wrap this one up shortly here. As soon as we finish this background, we'll sign it. Probably should have painted around this part of the stem first so that I could set my hand down without smearing paint down here, but hindsight. And I'm not having a whole lot of trouble. I am blocking the the view a bit more than I had hoped. storm going outside. I hope it's not uh, disrupting the stream too much. As you paint more, your confidence will start to increase. You'll get things figured out. And at the end of the day, there's no, no replacement for experience. We really do have to spend a lot of hours here. And that amount of time does vary person to person. But at the end of the day, you have to put in the time to get the results. I'm going to be taking some of these streams and making compressed versions so that you can skip ahead if you just want to watch the painting emerge without all of my talking and moments of silence here and just I realize committing 90 minutes if you're not painting along if you're painting along I hope you're enjoying the stream and the pace that I'm moving at but if not I'm going to be releasing, re-releasing some of these videos in a com condensed, summarized version. Once I find the time to sit down and make that happen. Sorry for standing in front of your view, but I'm trying not to lose my one leaf here. It actually extends out past the tomato, and I don't want to lose that. Alright.
So on Wednesday, we've got a heart teddy bear holding a heart and a rose. We're going to break it up into four painting sessions. I'm going to paint the rose in one session, and the heart in a session, the teddy bear in a session, and then the background and bring it all together in a session. So it's going to take four weeks. We'll be using this same palette. It's going to be a direct painting. It's just not going to be all a cream all at once. But we should be able to uh, express more detail and get closer to the reference. A little better realism. Alright, we're getting close. I'm going to switch to the larger brush here pretty soon. You see, I'm just at my 90 minutes now. We're pretty close to it. I didn't start the stream exactly at 630. Once we get away from the edges of the tomatoes, I'll be able to Definitely move a lot faster. just joining me. Thank you for, or if you've been here the whole time, thank you for your time for viewing. I'm interested in your thoughts. If you could share this with your friends or people you think would be interested in watching, it would be a, a great help as I'm trying to grow, grow with my audience here. some incremental gains with each stream here making them a little more accessible a little more enjoyable hopefully the music adding the music to the background has helped alleviate some of the dead space give you something to enjoy listening to when I'm not talking I don't know maybe you like it better than me talking be quiet already, I'm listening to the music. <laughs> it's very nice music. I'll have to uh, give credit to the artist here. I don't have it in front of me right now. played piano some myself over the years, but I'm nowhere near as skilled as this individual is. I had pondered recording some of my own tracks as background music, but when it came down to it, I just didn't have the time. Fortunately, Google provides a audio library for use in your videos. And so that's what we're listening to today. One of the individuals that plays a lot of classical. Because I like to paint the classical music. It's nice and calming.
All right. So I'm going to grab a larger brush here. It's like a three quarter inch filbert. And I'm going to pick up more of this and pull it back. to do something other than flowers today. Get too many people thinking all I'm going to do is florals here and they'd lose interest quick. If that's not their desired uh, subject matter. Alright, so now we're going to start adding a little more of this blue as we get further away from our tomatoes. It's a little bit rough. Trying to get paint work down into the whole structure of it here. If you're still following along, thank you for continuing to support and watch. I hope you're getting something of value out of this. If entertainment, maybe you think, maybe you're picking up a thing or two, just building some confidence and having some fun along the way, that would be great. And if you are up to sharing, please let us all know. Thank you.
Transitions nicer from the lighter portion to the darker portion. Try to add some more tracks into the sound music mix in case it's repeating a little too often. here kind of real lightly kind of come across well, I hope you enjoyed this painting I'm gonna sign it here and Done, but if you don't want to stick around for that, I understand. If you enjoyed this stream, please like. If you want to watch more or aren't already a subscriber, please subscribe. It helps YouTube know that it's valuable content people do like to see, and they will do more to promote it to other people. So that other artists can follow along and enjoy. this nice deep red that's what we're gonna sign it with let it stand out this time
I'm gonna go uphill a little bit when I sign. And I guess if it's consistent, it's fine. There we are. It's finished. Hope you enjoyed today. Next time, we'll, uh, like I said, we'll start on a teddy bear on Wednesday. And if you had fun, please like and subscribe. And uh, remember, don't be hard on yourself. Just keep painting. <laughs>